because we've taught our children so much of the right thing, but never taught them how to have a relationship with God. And when they struggle with things, they don't know how to handle that thing. And neither do we. We need a heart relationship with God. I want you to notice all the first the disease, a stony heart. Look at verse 26. He said, a new heart will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. What is the problem, preacher? Stony hearts is the problem. Let me tell you a few things about this stony heart. First of all, this morning, this stone is cold. It's in this building, but when you lay your hand on it, it's cool. It's cold this morning. And I'm afraid that many times our hearts have grown cold. We sing in the choir. We sing the song of Zion. We sing page 32 out of the choir notebook uh, in, in great fashion, but our hearts are cold. It's become insensible. It's past feeling. All warmth and affection for God and his word have died away. This, this rock down here, this stone, and by the way, I got a pretty one. I was kind of looking for an old rugged field stone, but I had that one at home and I brought it. All warmth and affection for God and His Word has died away. You can read the Word of God to that rock right there and all you want to today, and you know what it's going to be at the end of the day? A rock. No warmth, no affection. You can come down here and hug this rock, but it'll never hug you back. You can go down here and kiss this rock, but it'll never be mo moved by your tender acts of affection. <coughs> and all, it, it, all that God does, listen, we can have a glory hallelujah, shouting, running, slobbering, hollering, running, camp meeting, type meeting this morning, and you know what that stone is going to do? Just keep him in the middle. It'll sit right there. It could care less what goes on in the house of God. It's a religious stone. It's at church this morning. It came to church. In fact, I, I cleaned it up before I brought it to church. I brushed the dirt off of it. It's a clean rock. And it came to church. But when this service is over, unless me and Brother Jeremy one move it, it's still going to sit right where it is. The fact that people are dying lost and going to hell doesn't bother him. The fact that our church needs this and needs that doesn't bother him. The fact that our young people are going after the world in droves doesn't bother him. But it come to church. It's a religious rock. It's got a cold heart. Secondly, it's a hard heart. That rock right there is pretty hard. You throw much again it this morning, it'll break. We put a towel under it and set it gently on this on this glass top because I didn't want it the top to break. But it's hard. Nobody, I don't think, would want to use this rock for a pillow. Nobody would want to prop it <coughs> under your head or under your knees to give your knees some relief. Uh, it's hard. It's not. It doesn't show any emotion. That rock is never going to cry. That rock is never going to feel a great need for anything. In fact, if it rains and God poured its blessings of rain on that rock, you know what it would get? Wet. But as soon as the sun come out, it would get what? Dry. Is it going to be any different than what it is now? How many of you have come to church and have sat in church service after service after service and got up and left just like you came in? Nothing moved you. No affection was there. How many times has your children come to you and said, Daddy, I need you. You said, don't bother me now. I'm watching television. How many, how many times have your children come and said, Dad, I need to talk to you. Leave me alone. I'm working. How many times has a child come and said, Dad or Mom, I need work. I need some help with homework. Leave me alone. I'm tired. It's a stone. It's not easily impressed. Nothing we do here this morning is going to impress this rock. It, it's, it's unyielding. And many of us sometimes sit in our religious, uh, religiosity, in our set standard of religion and what we think is Christian service, and we are as unyielding as that rock is. 
Rock, would you please move? Come on, Rock, I need you to move. Look, Rock, I'm begging you, would you please move? Rock doesn't, you don't care. It's indifferent to all the gracious influences of light and the force of spiritual truth. Do you know that if we turned the lights off in here and sealed the windows up and there was no light in here, you know what that rock would be? Still a rock. If we turned the best and the brightest lights and the, the warmth of those lights came and we, and we took the word of God and said, Rock, rock I'm going to read to you great spiritual truths, it would still be a rock. It's not affected, it's unmoved. In fact, you could say that it is calloused. In fact, if you took that rock and handled it often enough without gloves on your hands, what would your hands be? What? Your hands would be calloused. Oh, preacher, listen, I, I know the Bible, I handle it regularly. Let me see your hands. I'll preach right now. I'm telling you, I've got my family under control. Bless God, they'll do what I say to Let me see your hands. Let me see your children. Are they callous? You see, one thing about this rock, it, it has lost its wonder at the grace of God. This morning, hundreds of people could get saved this morning if hundreds were here. And you know what that rock would do over people getting saved? Nothing. It would do nothing. Not only is this rock cold and hard, it's dead. It's incapable of any spiritual motion. That rock is never going to come to an altar. From that, you know what I, conclusion I could draw? From somebody that never come to an altar, kind of spiritual motion. There's no vitality toward God. It's deaf to his call and dumb for his name. If we call this morning and find you to call for Christian service, do you think that rock would be the first one to volunteer? Do you? This is, a, this is an interactive sermon. Do you, do you think that rock would volunteer? Hey, this morning, if I made a call for people to witness for the cause of Christ, do you think that rock would say, I've got a word to say, preacher? No. Why? Because it's dead. There's no life in that rock. If you put that rock in your garden, there may be some life under that rock. But there's no life in that rock. It's dead. Hey, listen, it's incapable of spiritual motion. There's no vitality toward God. It's deaf to his call and done for his, his name, and it will not accept the rich uh, mercies of the grace of God. There's nothing. Listen, if, if, I could, if I could put the grace of God in my hand and offer it to that rock this morning, it would not accept it. It can't. Secondly, I want you to see, we see the disease. Now let's see the remedy. You see our hearts sometimes, if we're not having the right relation, heart relationship with God, our, our heart is like that stone. So, preacher, what is the remedy for a stony heart? Now, this morning we could say a heart that is all wrong is made right. And to make a, a heart of stone right, it must not be content with outward reformation. You understand what outward, outward reformation means? Outward re reformation means we... We dress right. I'm a fundamental independent pre-millennial. Hell, fire and brimstone, non-kick, make up, set a car wash. Catfish eating Baptist. <laughs> I wear a three-button suit. And I know that to properly wear a three-button suit, you button the top two buttons and leave the bottom ones unbuttoned. <laughs> I know how to walk from that door to the pulpit. And his brother Terrell says, I, the youngest. 
I know I've been taught how to hold my Bible and preach. Bible open, left hand, preach with my right. I know how to make a point when I'm giving an invitation and begging to come. I was taught that. You know what that is? That's after. God and God message it comes to the full pity and weeps and cries and spires. We don't need outward reformation. He said, in, he said, a new heart will I give you a heart of flesh, and the only cure for a stony heart is a new heart. You know, this one I could take and the right kind of grinder and polisher, and I could polish and carve that stone into an altered shape and uh, and, and, and polish it to it glisten and put the right kind of polymers on it and make it smooth as anything uh, that, that you ever saw and improve it in all kind of ways. And you know what? It'll make it a better rock. But it won't make it a living rock. You know, I could carve this. I just want to put my name Polish it up, clean it up, but it don't make it live. It still is incapable of anything spiritual. It won't make it a living, living stone, but a heart of flesh, one thing, is, is a new heart. God said to the nation of Israel, and he's saying to us this morning, I'll take that heart of stone out and I'll give you a new heart. You, you know, just, just a couple of people that I've ever met in my lifetime have had a heart transplant. <laughs> and they got a new heart. Miss Albritton's son, uh, Glenn, a few years ago down in University Hospital in Tampa, Florida, they took a diseased, damaged heart that was barely functioning out and put in his body a heart out of a young man who had died and had offered his organs to be transplanted into somebody else. And they put within Glenn's body a new heart. That was all physical. That wasn't spiritual. That was all physical. By the way, when you think of Glenn, you pray for him because of the genetics of his body. You know what's happening now to that new heart? It's disease, too. And what I'm telling you this morning is we can have outward reformation all that we want to, but the wicked disease of sin that dwells when our bodies uh, will soon take over the outward reformation and we'll be just as sick as we ever were. And so the remedy this morning is a new heart, a, a heart that has, uh, that, that has had the love of sin destroyed in it. Do you love sin this morning? Do you love wickedness, iniquity? A new heart is a heart that the love of sin has been destroyed. A new heart is a heart that the guilt of sin has been taken away. It is the gift of God, and it takes the place of a stony heart. Uh, and so in getting a new heart, you get a new man. It's renewing of the whole man. It's not only new to the man that gets it, but its manifestations are new to all that see them. Listen, you this morning get your heart right with God, and God takes out a stony heart and puts in a new heart. It, you won't have to tell anybody that you've been with God. It'll show on the outside. It'll show in your family. It'll show in everything that you come in contact with. It'll be new in sentiments. It'll be new in hopes. It'll be new in affections. It'll be new in ambitions. It will be. Uh, it, it will go through a total alteration of in both motives and habits of a man. New heart. I want you to notice it to be a soft heart. There's one thing that rock is not, and it's not soft. <coughs> but a new heart, a heart of flesh, I mean you've got a soft heart. What does it take to move you? Can I say this kindly this morning, and please take it in the context I'm saying it. 
Sometimes we'll weep more over an animal that's been struck by a car than we'll weep over people dying and going to hell. I love our pets. I've got two of them. Well, I've got one dog and a grand dog. I guess you call we call her the Queen of Sheba. She rules the house and everything else. Include, she's a 12-pound little dog and rules an 80-pound lamb. <coughs> you know, there's some tenderness there. But when God replaces a stony heart with a soft heart and inclines the heart to those things that are well-pleasing in the sight of God, sensitive and childlike, easily impressed with the things of God, the stony nature has disappeared. 